The Ado State Government has placed a complete ban on all political rallies, demonstrations or processions in any part of the state. And a Nigerian lawyer who is being accused of terrorism has been refused bail by a federal high court in Calabar. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The risk between the governor of uh, Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, and the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Adams Oshomale, seems to have no end in sight as a complete ban has been placed on all political rallies in any party or any part of the state. Now, this is coming as a result of a clash between Oshomale supporters and those of the state governor, where no less than 15 persons were reportedly being injured. Now, the ban will directly disrupt a planned rally scheduled for today, which was supposed to welcome Osage Ize Iyamu to the APC from the PDP. Well, joining me to have this conversation, I have Dikbo Olayoku. He is a political analyst. It's good to have you join us. Yes, good evening. All yes, right. Good evening. And we also have Raymond Nkanebe. He is a legal practitioner. Thank you, Raymond, for joining Thank us. Thank you, Marianne. So, I I'm going to start with you, Dikbo. Um, one would have thought that this imbroglio between these two friends, as we used to know them, <laughs> um, would have been put to rest. Even when we saw them kiss and make up in front of the cameras, it seems to be brewing and it's a bigger fight, more than we actually expected. Yeah, it's because the, um, what we saw that seemed like a rapprochement was actually scratching the surface until the real issues are addressed. You said they were friends. I think it was a case of a godfather and a godson. Mm. It was because the gap between them, we saw what happened in the last election. It was as if Oshomole was the candidate. In fact, people saw him more as the candidate contesting against his age. And uh, you know how politics and how politicians react when you take hold of power. There are some other guys that will hijack you and tell you, you can use this power. So it's that people did not go into the real cause of the matter. And especially now that uh, the Edo election is far as approaching, fast approaching order. And uh, like some people will say, it's going to be fight to finish. Because there are indications that Izeyamu is coming into APC to be the candidate of Oshamale. That one is not, it's an open secret. And you see, nobody will open his eyes and allow uh, what we call something is going, that is going to remove you from office to fester. It is natural. It is not a matter of whether president or governor. You, can, you won't want it to fester. Yes, the law allows him to do that because he's the chief security officer of the state. That one is not in contention. And he has the right to place a ban on any activities that he deems fit could cause breakdown of law and order. And don't forget that um, this thing is very big, or it's a very large umbrella, the issue of security. Mm -hmm. You can hide the under it to do anything. And then until somebody decides to go to court and court packets that order, all processions, all rallies remain banned in Edo State until he reverses himself. And you know the reason. I think there's an aspect which was not even included in that thing, because don't forget, that politicians are very smart. Eventually, the rally was taken to somebody's private residence, mm -hmm. and it held. And immediately, they came up with a report, another order, that any house where such a thing happens, the government will revoke the cell phone. That is just to let you know the white powers that people in authority enjoy. And maybe we must begin to look at how can we withdraw down this power. Some people are even looking at it from, because I've been looking at watching comments that perhaps this is the danger when people are talking about state police. But we are seeing the drama. Let us see how it unfolds until the election time. Raymond, you're a lawyer, and he talked mm -hmm. about whittling down the powers that politicians have. And this is a conversation we've been having all through this week. How much power is vested on one office, even as we speak about the presidency and the disobedience of rule of law. I mean, if so much power is given to one person, how do we, where do we even start 
from when we say we want to whittle down those powers or we want to address how these powers are used? Well, I, I, I don't think uh, the issue of a power residing, too much power residing in a particular office is a concern. But you see, there are certain powers you cannot take out from certain power, from certain quarters. Like the powers of, uh, of a governor or a president being the chief security officers of their domains. You see, there is no how you can, um, there's no how you want to take out such power. It is sanctioned by the constitution, right? So I think a way out is for people who exercise those powers to know, know when to apply the brakes in the exercise of powers. And also know when not to, how, when not to use it for personal gains. Because what is happening in Edo states now, yes, the governor has said that there's a lot of security consideration. It's, already, it's, it's too wide, but we know behind that, he is he's, he's doing that to stem the tide of the challenge to his authority that he that, that threatened his continuous uh, 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 like say popularity or political reach within the state. So uh, for me, I think it's a question of the persons, the individuals uh, uh, occupying those offices, knowing how to apply or exercise those powers, and not actually taking out those powers from such offices. Because they, at the end of the day, they have to be they have to reside somewhere. It makes it seem like um, we're unable to do anything in this case because if you must look at how these powers are being used, then it means you have to go to the Constitution and that is a whole kettle of fish on its own. But we hear that politics is a game of interest and there are no true friends in politics. They're only people who, interest. you know, interest and those interests change as yeah. per time. In this case of a state, and as you have mentioned rightly, elections are around the corner. If this is what it's going to be, if we're seeing the writings on the wall, it might, be, it might get worse in the months to come. How can we hope, because that's the only thing I can say right now, to have free, fair, and credible elections when the time is? Uh, yeah, free and fair, credible election is, uh, is subjective. There was an election. In Why would it be subjective? Was, yes, because politics is local. Every politics, and that is why the texture of politics differ even from state to state. No talk of country to country. We just got to, we, they had an election in Britain yesterday, UK. Today, actually. Was it today? Very early. early. You know, it was yesterday. It was yesterday the and the results were early. Early. Yes. yes, and Saturday. it was as if the normal thing. But you see, in the evolution of man, or a state, there are stages. It now is now left to you to either complete the whole circle or abridge it. And unfortunately, Nigeria has chosen to go the whole hog. What it took some people 200 years, Nigeria won't take to take 200 years to accomplish it. When we should have learned a lesson from, and then there's also another lesson from this thing that people who struggle to put so their so-called stooge in office. We have still instances. Are we going to talking of Fabia State? The former governor, Oji Zakalu, and T. Oji. We saw what happened. Or are we talking of um, Akwa Ibom State? The uncommon governor and his, uh, the guy he installed. Because power is sweet. Even you can take ordinary campus politics into, uh, into consideration. Oh. <laughs> Some people struggle to get somebody into office as the president of SUG. And while you are struggling to get this person into office, some people were just in one corner waiting for the guy to emerge. By the time the guy emerges, they take over this guy from you people. And they make him to derail from the original plan of the concept of the group that installed these guys. And we have seen these ones play out in states. And that is exactly what is happening. And you see, the type of policies you play in Nigeria is politics of absolute control. Whoever wins, take it all. Take it, takes it all. There is nothing left for the loser, and that is why the contest to get to the, the mantle is always very stiff. And also, we have a problem with a situation where somebody has absolute control over the post of the state. In other countries, it's not that easy, either for the prime minister or the president to be able, or a minister to be able to go into the phone. Only yesterday they told us that some guys were jailed 42 years or thereabout because somebody bribed them with about 260 million naira, mm -hmm. a minister. And then you ask yourself, how did he or she 
get access to this kind of a money. Not to talk of a governor. We were in this country when, in 2007, a governor came out to say he stole 17 billion naira in a day. And he said, yes, I gave 10 billion to the president who was calling for third term. Openly, he said it. So then you ask yourself, the system that allows such a person to have access to such much money, I think that is the system we need to curb first. As a matter of fact, some people have even suggested that maybe we should subject our political office holders to what they call minimum wage. Oh, this is a, this is a, an issue that uh, we know will not be able to fly. Yeah, because, this because is if we get there. because he has to pass through the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And I always mm -hmm. ask, who wants to cut his nose to spite his face? Yeah, yes, we will get there someday. I'm only telling you the reason why there will be this chief contest to get into power. Because when you get into power, you become the lord of your state. You become the lord of your president. But that is not how it's supposed to be. But that is where it, that is how it is cut out. But in how this did we be come to this position where we're very comfortable with it? We know what it is. We're talking about it as we speak. But how come we're so comfortable or we're so removed, far removed from it so much so that we just talk about it? Like, ah, well, that's what it is. How come? Well, um, this is is uh, is uh, it appears is a Nigerian is a Nigerian something. Is it? And, at, and even to an extent, an African an African problem because I try to see the symmetry between what is happening here in and in most uh, African society. So we have a problem of uh, leadership, basically tr starting from. And you don't think we have a problem of followership? Oh, to, uh, okay, I'll get there. A problem of leadership that stems from the the mentality of the African man and his approach to wealth and embezzlement and just kleptomaniacy to, to a great extent. Wow. He gets into power, he just wants to um, accumulate so much for himself and for a generation. And, and then even from the, fol from the followership, there is that kind of unwritten um, uh, acceptance that yes, he's in power, I think he should better uh, people from his domain. And you see them asking, uh, okay, he's in, what did he do for us? What did he do for us? There's no question of what did he do for the whole. So it's an African and a Nigerian problem, and um, I think it, we have to do, and it has a lot to do with value reorientation and correcting the, the mindset of, uh, of, of this, of, of We, of we throw it out there, to, oh, we to, need character reformation, we need to change our mindsets. How? What is the how to? Where do we start it? How do we start it? Who's... Are we going to start it? Exactly. What are the parameters of going well, about the, it because we keep throwing the, it out the, there the, the, oh the we need character formation who's going to start of it change and character and character, oh, character formation uh, that sounds like something there. this government came came into power with have you seen that change no, what i'm saying is this, that the social institutions of change has been the same for a long time that is uh, the family the school uh, and in that order. So I think... Religious and also religious um, um, organization. Yes. So the family, because I believe the family being the smallest unit of every, uh, of every society, uh, if we get it right from, the, from each nuclear unit of every family and then into the schools, I'm sure that way the, the next generation can, 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 do, can do better. But beyond that, I don't, think that I don't see any way where uh, uh, it happens in a flash. It has to come and over time, and this, some of these values and cultures will be embedded into the. I'm going to ask a very politics. silly question that people ask me when I say it start. It has to start from the home. Some people say, "How many Which people home? are home, home to even do this?" Because everybody's out there trying to make a buck. Which home? Is it the father or the mother that will go out of his or her way to go and buy re, um, result for a small child? And that the who does the home we are talking about, you you see the, the, because at times when we look at when some of us were growing up, and then some of things that were thrown at us then, but some of these things these days they call it fire and child abuse. I, I used to tell some guys that when I was growing up, my father was using hosp uh, what do you call it uh, hospital, but you can't drive that again. That they can oh, yes, uh, That's child abuse. When we were growing up, the community trained a child. Yes. But these days, you see parents going to school because the teacher had punished or applied the appropriate punishment mm -hmm. to the children. So this thing, unfortunately, the come of us at times when you sit down, you ask yourself, where do you start the process of collecting these anomalies? Is it the pool in government? How did they get into government? What was the aim of getting into government? Uh, we were about uh, two or three years ago, we were at a seminar. Then we got talking with a member of uh, parliament in Britain. 
in UK. And the guy was asking the question that when he had, there are some people when they had problem with paying their world children's school fees, their wives are just giving back in the hospital, they go to their representatives. He said, well, where do you expect him to get the money from? And that is the prop, the bane when you are talking about leadership. What about the followership? Barista was he made a make something just in, 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 in passing. Some people believe that when you get into office, it is the turn of their section of the country. Benefit. And that is why people fight over who gets this, who gets what. Because it is believed that it's our turn. When you go into office, you want to be Mr. Clean. They will be telling you of the other person what mm -hmm. happened to him or her. Mm -hmm. So at times we ask ourselves, where do we start the measures to correct these anomalies? We are already deep down in it. When we were growing up, even a father, a husband and wife, if they have any quarrel, and the wife threatened that when I get to church, I will report you to the reverend, the husband will become a gentleman. But these days, what do you see? If any reverend tries to prove it because the man will change church. So it's a web of a, of yes, a circle yes. that we don't know how to get out of it. Mm. Unfortunately, we are getting deeper and deeper into it. Look at what is happening in Edo State. What is the big deal if somebody decides to cross from one party to the other? But because you see it as a threat. Let me tell you one thing. In the next, until we go into election in Edo State, governance will stop completely. But, and who is suffering? But, 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 but the governance is not really working per se, because remember, the House of Assembly is still a thing. There are people who still have not been sworn in. Yes. They were voted for by constituents mm -hmm. who have not been able to rip the dividends. I mean, on a normal day, we don't, but I'm just okay, saying. No there is no representation whatsoever mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. those people. Mm -hmm. And that's a major issue. So I'm wondering what other governance we're talking about here. So it's just the governor and his commissioners who are working. <laughs> what about the other guys? So that is a big issue on its own. And I always ask myself, where are the Edo state people in all of this? What are they saying? Because it's the same young people, idle young people that the government wants to pay stipends to, mm. that are in the streets right now, sitting around, looking for campaign rallies. Yes. You know, so, mm. so where, does, where do the constituents come in here? Why do the people not speak up? Or do they not see that this is affecting them? Well, you see, for the people, uh, for the people to an extent, these political players are fighting this proxy war. I call it a proxy war to an extent because you see that there are interests, even from the, from the masses, even within those constituents, they are, there is this sharp divide. For those loyal to this and those loyal to this. So you see, they are also, uh, they are also involved in the fight as it were, trying to uh, push their own different interests, right? So, uh, like you pointed out, there is also a gross problem of followership and unfortunately what how much can they actually do i ask myself what how, what can they actually, but the power should, is can they but the can power they actually lies approach with the people. can they approach that's in principle literature theory but in practice in practice we know where the power is sure it has been detention for over 130 days now and that's because we do not realize and that we, we have, have a whole mass of 200 million persons what have they done power lies in people in principle at the end of the day power resides in government Right? Well, that's unfortunate. I, 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 I don't want. To, I don't I, know if you agree I, I, with and that. There's another issue which we need to take very seriously: the connect between the leadership and the followership. We remembered in 1979 to 1983 when there was this allegation of rigging in Ondo State, then the old Ondo State, and how people, without being prodded, pumped into the streets and they wreak havoc. Because there was a connect between the leadership and the followership. But unfortunately, with the present couple of Nigerian politicians, Nigerians have not really identified with them or their cause. This is because they are so alienated from us. This is because they have not identified with the journeys and aspirations of the masses. So when any fight ensued between these two people or these people, Nigerians see it as if we could not them. Yeah. You mentioned the Shewore issue because you just mentioned it. How many people identify with that cause? How many people believe that he was fighting or he is fighting their cause? So, that, so that we do not digress. The Nigerian politicians, especially let us go to, let us locate ourselves or localize ourselves within mm -hmm. the Edo percent. There are other political parties. How come that Nigerians or Edo people will not say, okay, you people continue to cancel yourself out, then we'll look for an alternative. But we are not that politically sophisticated. 
So that is why it is still a choice between this and that. And that is why the context is so stiff, it's either this or that. But if Nigerian political politicians have been so advanced to the extent that we can say, for example, look at what happened in, during the Ote Dollar era. Ote Dollar, Sarumi, and somebody who did not even win in the House of Assembly election eventually emerged as the governor. Mm -hmm. That was when the electorate was sophisticated. They could say, okay, we are going to punish politicians. But these days, these people will cancel themselves out. Whoever emerged from these two political parties will still be the candidates to be. It's so quite that's what I, I think that is where we should it's, focus it's our attention. Point. Yes. Well, we, we need to take a break because we're almost out of time. But this is a very interesting conversation. We're going to come back and talk more about followership because leadership, as we speak right now, is question or is in question. Well, we'll come back and then we'll be talking about what is happening in Cross River State and what what the government is doing to its critics. Stay with us.